I see somebody's here with me. Can't tell who it is just yet. Do me a favor. You're joining in. Go on and tag your friends. We've got about another two minutes before we get this garage school started. Hey, Daniel, I see that you're here today. Go on and tag some friends. Get them into garage school. Whoopsie, it's on this side of me. <laughs> garage school. Come on, bring your friends in. Tell them to come on and join us, all right? We're getting ready for garage school. Got a couple of exciting new tips to give you today. I'm going to tag a few more people before we get to 1230 when we get started, okay? We're inviting all kind of people today from all over the nation. I'm even inviting my cousins that are in other countries. So hello to my cousins that are in London. Hello to my cousins that are in Australia. Hello to my cousins that are in Saudi Arabia. I miss you guys. I love you. I'm praying that this will soon be over with our world with this coronavirus and we can get back to being able to travel and see one another again. Hi, Tudikins. Yes, yes, yes. I'm so happy to see you all. Hi, Marilis. Oh my gosh, I haven't seen you in a minute. What's going on, Henry? All right, we've got another one minute. Go on and invite your friends. Bring some people into the party because we are going to go, where is it? Oh, it's on this shoulder. We're going to garage school today. Thank you all for coming. Hey, boo. Tootie, as soon as this is over, I promise I'll get over and work on your projects, okay? Got it? I'm not doing this for everybody. I'm doing this for Tootie. I'm doing this for Tootie. You guys understand me? I'm doing this for Tootie. All right. So we're almost ready. Hey, Lance. Lance, are you back in Atlanta or are you in Houston? Where are you now? Lance, you see what I got on today? H U, you know. All right. We're getting ready to get started today. I put on my Howard alumni gear because in my old school district, we used to wear our gear every Friday to represent our colleges or our universities or trade schools or military installations that we were in. But you know what? I have a, I have a wall full of Howard gear and I will be repping it every Friday that we're doing garage school. Okay. Let's get started. So without further ado, give me a show of hands. Who was here with me yesterday, which was Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday? Who's been with me this week on Garage School? I need to know who's been here with me. Give me some hands. Because if you've been here with me, especially yesterday, you saw a little faux pas happen. Yesterday, when I was going over one of the techniques. Oh, Sherry Jingles is in. Hi, Miss Jingles. I miss working with you. All right, so we had um, a little faux pas happen yesterday when I was going over the technique for countersinking a hole. My drill bit, because you see the drill bit for the countersink hole, it has an attachment to it. And right here, it has a lock washer on it and the lock washer was not tightened properly. And I didn't know it because I hadn't used this bit in a very long time. I assumed that it was right, but you know what? It wasn't tightened. So what I did was I found my nifty Allen wrench tool and I was able to tighten it up. So today we can start off by going over our countersinking of holes. Are you guys ready? So you're like, okay, what's a countersinking of a hole and why is it necessary or important? Here's the reason why. Oh, wait a minute. Did it slide on me? No, it didn't. Okay, let me put this back in here. Maybe it did slide. Let's see, if it did slide, I wanna make sure it's right. Let me go on and adjust that real quick again. Uh, I'm pulling out another set of sockets. Look at all these sockets that I have. For this one, I think I needed a T10 to adjust it. Yeah, that's what I needed was a T10, yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna adjust this back down so I can do the proper countersink. There we go, okay. That's in there like I want it to be now. Let me tighten this on back up. Boom, boom. Nice and tight. I'm just hand tightening it because I don't want it to be overly tightened because it makes it really hard to pull out later. All right, there we go. I put my T10 back in the case. And yes, we will have to go over all of these types of tools at a later time because there's so much to know in construction. 
All right. So now we started off going over countersink. Well, why is a countersink hole important? Countersink hole becomes important because when you're putting a screw into a piece of wood and you're wanting to make sure that that screw goes in, oh, I'm just flubbing up today, with, with having an, a nice even finish across the top, let me use this piece of wood right here. You're gonna wanna use what we call I pray that did not break my, break my drill bit. We'll see in a second. No, the drill bit is saved. Okay, all right, so you wanna do what's called a countersink, especially when you're working with fine furniture because you wanna make sure that there's a nice smooth surface on top of your wood so that if you're gonna put in a put putty on it or something else to hide the hole, everything is nice and evenly done. And sometimes the screw is used for a decorative element. So you wanna make sure that they're plunged to the exact same length. So without further ado, I'm going to put my safety goggles on because safety is what? First, while I've got my safety goggles on, go on and invite some friends while we get this countersinking of the hole done. All right, ready? I'm gonna start countersinking the hole. I'm gonna do it right next to this one. Can you all see the surface? All right, when countersinking a hole, you see that there is a conical shape on the end of this drill bit. Now this is an attachment that you put onto the drill bit. All right, I'm going to drill the hole. And you're able to see, ah, this drill bit is an old one, so it does some funkity stuff. All right. So now you're able to see, here's the hole that I drilled with the countersink. And you see how it has a little hollow piece in the middle right there? And look what's on the other side. There is no hollow, there is not, it's not big, it's hollow. So this portion of the hole is intended for the head of the screw to fit down inside of. You see the hole, how that fits down inside of there? Okay, and so what you can do is you can use the hole that you did the countersink with screwdriver. Where is it? Okay. Use the hole. And now look, you see how the head of the screw is underneath the surface of the wood. That's the reason that you want to, or the purpose of doing a countersink so that you're able to hide the head of your screw. See that how pretty that is? Look, if I turn it sideways, you don't even see it. All right, it gives, it gives you, the head of your screw a nice conical shape. You see how this is the same shape? It gives it a nice conical shape to fit into. That's the whole purpose and the whole point behind a counter sink. Yes, Raynard, these blooper reels are real. And I'm leaving every single one of them in because if you think that I'm perfect at this, you're absolutely wrong. There's things that I know, there's things that I'm learning every day. And we want to keep the bloopers in because I want students to know that when you're learning, it's a safer place to make a mistake. Don't be afraid to make a mistake. Be encouraged by your mistakes because when you make them, you learn not to do them so frequently later on. All right, I'm going to go and pull this screw out. All right, you see that? Nice and simple. Ta-da! And right here, I have a T25 drill bit. You see that? It's like kind of looks like a star on the end. Let me see if I can get it in the in the frame pretty well. All right, that's called a T25 drill bit. A lot of times they're used with screws that look like this, and these are used for decking. Now I know that you're probably are saying, well, sometimes your screws are different colors, and yes, they are, and there's a specific reason. We'll go into that in another lesson, but if you like, you can look it up in advance so that you can be the star pupil of the day and be able to share with the class what you know. And it's not always me telling me telling you what I know. Cool? Let's do that. All right. So, you understand countersinking of holes? I hope that you do. Countersinking of holes is actually pretty fun. Because if you're going to drill a hole and you don't countersink, I'm going to use the countersink bit. I'm just not going to go down all the way with the countersink bit. Just to demonstrate what it looks would look like if I tried to force the uh, head of the screw in. There we go. 
Now you see, I did not actually sink the hole. I just put it down a little bit. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing, which is to screw a T25, T25 head of a screw down into this hole. Ready? Now, I don't know if you can see it or not, but if you can see where it actually rips the wood just a little bit, the head of the screw is not all the way down flush to the surface, all right? And if you were going to try to hide this by putting putty in it, you would have to continuously push it down, push it down, push it down, and it could actually damage your wood more. You don't wanna do that. You wanna use your countersink in instances where you're doing fine finishing. So make sure you remember to use your countersink which is right here, all right? So take that out, and we're gonna move on to the next Oh, did I mention that there's a test today? You know it's Friday, we gotta have some kind of assessment to make sure, so that I can make sure that you know what happened this week on garage school, all right? So the next thing I'm gonna talk about is called reaming. So yesterday we discussed being able to step up in sizes with your drill bits in case you need to have a larger hole drill. Sometimes having a larger hole is not, or sometimes you don't have the drill bit available. Maybe you've broken a drill bit along the way. And so you need to make a slightly larger hole. So in this case, we're gonna do something called reaming. Now, when I, I'm gonna show you all how to ream and I'm gonna use a 1 8 inch drill bit. All right, in order to do the ring. Now, why would I want to use a 1 8 inch drill bit instead of choosing, say, for instance, a 1 6, I'm sorry, an 11 64, which is really the size that I may want? Well, you see, the, the 1 8 is smaller than the, one, than the 11 64. So you, but you want to get up to this 11 64 size. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna ream it because you just don't have this one available. Maybe you walked out the house, maybe you just didn't buy a set that had that particular uh, hole size in it. It's okay, no need to worry. What you're gonna do is you're gonna drill in straight. You're gonna pull out. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna, you see all that swarf? You remember that? That's one of your exam words today because I'm gonna ask you to give me what swarf is. Hey, how you doing, Angela? able to join me and hi Joyce glad to see that you're here yes hey Yolanda how are my babies Yolanda I miss them all right so now I'm going to do what's called a ream so when I do a ream I want to make the hole larger so what I'm going to do is I'm going to gently rotate my drill bit to make my hole larger that's called the ream so this is the hole that I drilled into you see now how I have wiggle room inside of the hole see that how i'm able to wiggle it that's because i was able to ream the hole to make the hole bigger if you're having if you have the, the a, a drill bit that's too small for what you need to drill but you need to open the hole slightly you're going to do what's called reaming all right reaming is not that hard but you have to be careful because if you do what's called over reaming you'll create a much larger hole than what you want and what happens is in the process is in the process of reaming, you, you wind up creating like a conical shape that kind of looks like this. It goes in, it goes out. So your tightest point is right here in the middle, all right? So that just means that there's a little bit of surface area that's gonna catch your screw, not the surface area of the entire shaft that you just drilled. So sometimes you want that and a lot of time you don't. Just make sure that you're understanding what happens is that this shape forms cone at the top, cone at the bottom when you're doing your reaming. Got it? Give me some thumbs up if that makes sense to you. Did I explain it well enough for you to understand? Hey, Steve Reinhardt, Glendale in the house today, my old neighborhood in Detroit, Michigan. I see you, Steve. Okay, so now you understand how to countersink. You understand how to ream. The next thing I'm gonna talk to you is about about is called toenailing. Toenail? What does a toenail have to do with construction? Uh, don't know. It's okay. Toenailing is the process of drilling at an angle to catch two pieces or more of material. 
toenail. Let's say for instance, this is your wall unit, okay? And you have your wall studded up, but you need to add another stud. Typically, when you're framing up a wall, the studs are nailed or screwed from the bottom, typically nailed, not screwed from the bottom, but you're needing to add an additional stud right here. So what do you do? Because you can't get to the bottom of the, sill, of the, of the base plate, there's no way to drill up or figure out how to get in there with the hammer. It's just not possible. So you're going to do a process called toe nailing. Now with the toenail process, what happens is you're using your screw and you're going to go in at an angle and you want to catch the material at an angle so that your screw goes through both pieces of material and causes it to be able to be held. You see that? You want to go right in and you're going to do what's called a toenail. So when you're toenail, and actually I probably should have done it to this side because I'm right-handed and it'll be a little bit easier for you to see if I do it right-handed versus left-handed. I'll do it on, yeah. Oh, you know what? I did it on the right one. I'm looking at it backwards in the screen. All right. So when I toenail, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on this, this same line, okay? And I'm going to go drill in and then go at an angle. I'm gonna to attempt to do a 45 degree angle, but I'm also gonna to toenail right here as well because I want you to see, this is gonna to be toenail number one, this is gonna to be toenail number two because I want you to see what happens when you toenail and I want you to see how the angle of the screw comes out. So ready, set, let's do toenail number one. We're gonna to do toenail number one right here so that you can see it. Somewhere is the top of this pin, and I will find that later. All right, so when you toenail, you're gonna start off at your point where you wanna start to drill. Drill a little bit in, and then as you're drilling, you're gonna pull down into a 45 degree angle and push it the rest of the way. You see how I did that? Okay, I'll do another one for you. Pulling down, and then drilling in. You see how my, my uh, drill is at an angle? That's the toenail. All right, so with the toenail, I'm gonna take my screw and I'm going to drill my screw in because now my screw is gonna go in at an angle. I want you to be able to see that. You see now my screw is gonna go in at an angle. See, the screw's gone in at an angle. You don't see it, it's disappeared but it went in at an angle. So now I'm gonna show you the same toenail, but I'm gonna do it here so that it pops out on this side so you say, actually see what happens to the screw because the screw should come out at this angle right here. And that's what I'm work looking to achieve just so that you can see how there's material that was grabbed down here from the screw going in. And that's part of the toenail process. So ready, set, here I go with the next toenail. I'm gonna drill down. And then I'm going to, as I, as I keep the drill bit running, I'm going to pull it down at an angle and then drill in. All right, that's created an angle that's approximately 45 degrees. Are you all able to see that? I hope that you are. And I'm gonna turn this way just a little bit because hopefully you'll be able to see what happens with that toenail. Ready, set, here we go. Ha ha, you see that? You see how that worked? That's where the toenail comes in handy because what happened is the angle of the screw allows for, for the material that's at the bottom to be grabbed. Who thinks that's cool? I do. I actually love toenailing. Now there are certain, um, there are certain uh, jigs that are already set up so that you can toenail. One of my favorite jigs is behind me that does the toenail and that is called a Craig jig. Now this is a small Craig jig set. Uh, they come in several different sizes, but this is one of the most basic Craig jig sets and this actually does, has a preset, ready set, toenail process that it does for you. And that's by Craig jig. Where's their um, logo? Don't see it on here, but you know what? It's on the outside of the box. So Craig jig makes amazing products, including this that they call the Craig Jig and the Craig Jig does 
toenails. So big ups to Craig Jig for making this a consistent process for doing the toenailing. Now, so that I don't hurt myself with this screw later on, I'm just gonna pull it on out. All right, and that's how you toenail. So we've gone over three different techniques today. Can you all type in the comments and tell me what techniques we went over? Tell me what we went over today. Anybody remember? Type in the comments, let me see. Who knows what we went over today? We went over three concepts today. We went over countersinking of holes. We went over reaming of holes and we went over toenailing. Those are three really important concepts when it comes to construction and building trades and how to use your drills. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, we are, gosh, can you believe we've been on here for almost, almost what, 25 minutes? That time goes by so, so fast. So can anybody, does anybody have any questions about what we've gone over this week? Hmm, any questions? I'm looking for questions. Ha ha, hey Rich, what's going on neighbor? Yes, brother, 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 I see you out there. Anybody have any questions about what we've gone over? Not yet, I don't see them popping up. Yes, well you can catch me later. Yes, you can, Steve. All right, anybody else have any questions? All right, since you all don't have any questions, I've got a few questions for you. Are you ready? Question number one, what is SWARF? S-W-A-R-F, what is SWARF? Oh yes, this is a pop quiz. You didn't think we were gonna get to Friday at garage school and not have a pop quiz. Come on, come on, what is SWARF? What is SWARF? Oh yes, AB, I know you're ready for some hands-on, but unless I get the principles in, I can't teach the hands-on. That would be socially irresponsible, like spreading the coronavirus. So I wanna make sure that you all know what these terms are. So tell me what's SWARF? Somebody type in the comments, what's SWARF? Okay, enough of that music. Swarf. Swarf is the wood that gets into the channels of your drill bit. That is swarf. You all remember what swarf is? Hi, Lindsay. I see you. Hey, Patrick. Swarf. Swarf. Okay? Yes. Oh, Raynard got it. Yes, it is sawdust embedded on the drill bit. All right, big ups, Raynard. Raynard is like so way super intelligent. We had an amazing conversation last night about hammer drills and impact drills. When I tell you this gentleman is an amazing, amazing resource, I mean it. Okay, so super great. So you remember what SWARF is, okay? Next question. What's the difference between corniferous and deciduous wood? Hmm, anybody remember corniferous and deciduous? Hmm, what's the difference? Corniferous and deciduous, I'm looking for an answer. Looking for an answer. Yes, I wish I could give you some thumbs up. Thumbs up. Oh, you never heard me mention the debris before. Hmm, it was, it was said on an earlier episode. I'm sorry you missed it. Yes, Henry Caldwell. Yes, you know exactly what SWARF is. Okay, so now we are on to the difference between carnivorous and deciduous. Who knows what the difference is between carnivorous and deciduous? Anybody know? Carnivorous and deciduous. <laughs> I'm waiting for some answers. I know that you've got them. I see you, Terrence. What's up, man? We're looking for the difference between carnivorous and deciduous woods. Boy, I don't see anybody chiming in. Raise your hand if you kind of remember between carnivorous and deciduous. I know we've been talking about drills all week, but carnivorous and deciduous has been a part of the lesson. All right, let me go back over carnivorous and deciduous. All right, so you have two types of trees that grow. One type of tree has leaves on it, like 
oak trees. <laughs> Y'all gonna make me listen to some more day talking about this oak tree. Oak trees are a coniferous type of tree. Cornifer I'm sorry, deciduous type of tree. Deciduous type of trees have leaves on them. All right, like oak trees, um, maple trees, uh, pecan trees. Those are all deciduous types of trees. All right. And those are considered hardwoods. Not necessarily that the, hard, the wood is harder than a, a tr harder in density than what could come off of a coniferous tree, but deciduous trees are called hardwoods. All right. The other kind is coniferous. A coniferous wood. Oh, this smells like a Christmas tree. <laughs> I love the smell of wood. Y'all should know that. It smells like Home Depot to me. <clears throat> All right. Coniferous is referring to the cone on or or the pine needles or the needles like pine needles on a tree so there are two different types of trees trees that have leaves and trees that have pine have have pine cones or cones on them okay so that's the reason you're going to have the difference between corniferous and deciduous or softwood and hardwood doesn't mean that the wood is harder or softer in density it's just the naming of the tree all right y'all got that ready N one last pop quiz question are you ready oh good reynard pine is soft exactly oh i see somebody's been listening or maybe somebody already knew i don't know last question for the day what is the name of the term for this particular action? What's the term for what I just did? I'm gonna put a screw in. What's the term for that? What's the term, do y'all remember? What's the term? Hey, Carl, what's up, Detroit? Detroit in the house. What's the term for this? Who remembers? It was the last thing we went over for today for the lessons of the week. Does anybody remember what this particular method is called? Anybody remember? <laughs> I know that you got to know. I know that you got to know. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for the thumbs up. Yes, Sandra, it's toenailing. I'm from Detroit. We got toenailing. Yes. Oh, my gracious. Thank you so much for, for paying attention, for tuning in, for giving me answers on your pop quiz. Yes, Lindsay, you got it right, too. Thank you so much. You all interacting with me means everything it's what keeps me going i've got lots of comments in my comment section about the directions that you would like to see this going for garage school there's a lot of material to cover cover because there's a lot that has to happen in order for you to understand construction you see just a few tools behind me here they are just a few tools behind me but believe me when i tell you in my garage school i am surrounded by tools and each one of them has a specific um, uh, material that it's used for. They also have specific um, <laughs> jobs that they're used for. And so there's lots of tools that are out there that are available. And there are so many different techniques to use every single one of them. So if you want to know more information, Give me some shout outs. Give me some thumbs up. Put some comments in my comment section. Let me know what you want to hear about. And we're going to get to all of this on Garage School. Shout out to my alma mater, HU, Howard University. That's who I'm repping today. Proud Howard alum. And um, you know what? I've got Howard alum friends that are doing some amazing things online and offline to keep you guys engaged during this particular time. So thank you for tuning in. All right. I love you. Thanks for tuning in with your kids. I love you, kiddos. Ask your parents to tune in to uh, Disney Plus and find me on, what is the show? Oh, Shot Class, Episode 3. See you soon.